Hello, baby. Hello, and welcome to another Friday reading vlog from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books, and David from his TikTok time, and Daphne from... I don't know what time it is for Daphne. What time is it normally for Daphne this time of the morning? Um... Running around chasing the yeah. uh, disco ball light time. That's her favourite thing to do. Um, yeah, so it's just before nine o'clock on Friday. We're about to start another Friday reading vlog. Hurrah! I think we're going to go into the rest of the weekend with this one, which is very exciting. Got a few things planned, but the main... I mean, not the main thing. It's not the main thing. We're going to have a blood test done at 9.50. Um, so I'd planned to have a little read in bed and then do a few bits. But I think the main thing is, is that I will drink my tea in bed then I'll get ready and then we'll come back and film proper the reading that will be going on over the weekend and the plans for the weekend um but yeah I'm just going to sit and read um Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett in bed we'd like to maybe get this finished this weekend um well that's exciting I'm about to start reading the next day so it's, it's written like a diary and the next day is the day before my birthday imagine um, so yeah, so I'm going to have a little sit and read and then when I get back from Doctors, we'll have a proper sit and catch up because there's a lot to be done this weekend um, and I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. Yep. I'm back. No blood taken. The blood test that they'd asked me to have done, because I'm low in iron, and the blood test that they'd asked me to have done was a B12 because apparently if you're low in iron quite often you're low in B12 as well. But they'd already tested my B12 last week, so they didn't need to do it. So, um, yeah, I handed in my stool sample, but they didn't need to test my blood. So, popped to the library on the way back, picked up this. The Manor House Governess, which I think is from Katie from Books and Things' is Best Books of the Year, uh, by C.A. Castle. All Bronte Ellis has ever known is life at St Mary's All Boys Boarding School, where he lingered first as a student and then as a teaching assistant. So when a chance to forge a new life in Cambridge presents itself, he seizes it with both hands. Arriving at Greenwood Manor as the new living tutor, Bron finds himself welcomed by all, the gregarious Mr Edwards, his precocious pupil Ada, except for Darcy, the elusive and tempestuous eldest son. Despite the rumours about him, Bron cannot help feeling drawn to the one person who seems determined to avoid him. When tragedy strikes the house, Bron begins to sense dark secrets smouldering beneath Greenwood's manor surface. Soon he's not sure what to believe or whether he has to be, he, ha he even has a future at Greenwood. Only Darcy holds the key if it can be persuaded to reveal his heart to Bron. So there we go, pick that up. But the books that I'll be looking at today are, I've already mentioned, I've been reading Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Um, quite enjoying this. It's very sort of whimsical and uh, I think it might even say a charmingly whimsical delight. And I was about to say it's very whimsical and charming. So yeah, uh, India Holton agrees with me. Um, it's about a young woman, Emily Wilde, uh, travelling to what I imagine is Iceland a lot of the spelling oh no it's it oh yeah so I imagine it is Iceland a lot of the spelling looks Icelandic to me she says having read one book about Iceland um and studying fae fairies um and their um, and brownies and all sorts of different types of little creatures that may live in the forest or in the home and things like that and she's accompanied by her uh, friend Wendell Bambury um, and yeah it's written in journal entries I'm, I'm enjoying it it's very gentle sort of not too gentle for me um, and yeah I'm, I'm hoping I'll get it finished this weekend because I'm on page 226 I've got a feeling I've got less than 100 pages to go I have got less than 100 pages to go. Um, so yeah, so I imagine I'll get this finished during this vlog. Then I wanted to have a non-fiction book on the go as well. Um, and I picked Monsters Up, A Fan's Dilemma by Claire Dederer after hearing about it on Lena's Best Books of the Year. Um, and this is um, about uh, separating the art from the artist, um, which is something I've always been quite interested in. Um, and this is in particular uh, looking at that um, in relation to men. So it says, what do we do with the art of monstrous men? Can we love the work of Roman Polanski and Michael Jackson, Hemingway and Picasso? Should we love it? Does genius deserve special dispensation? What makes women artists monstrous? And what should we do with beauty and with our unruly feelings about it? Claire Dedera explores these questions and our relationships with the artist whose behaviour disrupts our ability to understand the work on its own terms. She interrogates her own responses and behaviour and she pushes the fan and the reader to do the same. Morally wise, deeply considered and sharply written, monsters get to the heart of one of our most pressing conversations. 
so yeah i'm finding yeah I'm, I'm very interested in that so i will start that at some point this weekend as well so those are the two books both library books i've got almost 60 library books out at the moment so she needs to make a dent in those um and then just a few more bits. So I'm about to edit um, the interview that uh, my co-hosts from All About the Archers did, Quentin and Philippa, did with um, Daisy Badger, who plays Pip Archer in The Archers. It's about 40 minutes long, so that will take me over an hour, I would say. Um, we're also going to the cinema at 4.30 today to watch Ar Argyle, Argyle. I'm really not sure how to say it. Um, and we've seen the trailer for it, it looks quite fun. Um, but I've since read um, I've since read reviews that have said that the trailer um, is probably the best bits of the film. And also it's, um, I saw something like cinema's most expensive mistake. <laughs> so we'll see. That's at 4.30, which is a lovely time to go to the cinema because it means you're back in, probably sitting on the sofa doing a bit of um, cross stitch by eight, maybe, or for dinner afterwards. Um, but. I like to do a bit of baking in these Friday reading vlogs now, don't I? Um, and the cake I'm making today, because I'm working my way through uh, the sweet roasting tin by Rukmini Ear. Um, and I'm making marmalade coffee cake. Now, d neither David nor I like coffee, and David doesn't like marmalade, so this will be interesting. Uh, but I'm committed to working my way through it. My brother-in-law, however, loves coffee, so um, I'll make the two because I've, I've got another one of those um trays that i've been making them in so i'll make two trays worth we'll take one to the cinema tonight and then we'll take another when we go to dinner at my sister's tomorrow night um and hopefully that'll be nice so that's gonna happen um then we also need a question for the day don't we to answer for the for the vlog um and then i'll be at the end or at some point i mean maybe i'll do this at some point during rather than at the end uh listen to a piece of classical music from a year of wonder and then we'll finish with a poem for every winter day are we still in winter for february we are still in winter for february um so yeah oh yeah and the last thing i need to have a look so i've got eight more of these prompts left from this oh something else i've got to do i've got to go and post jen's birthday present it's a very bad friend of me i've got to my friend Jen made me this amazing book uh, uh, book challenge box with um, 10 challenges in. I've completed two of them. I've completed read a book that was on another booktuber's best books of the year list. I mean, I'm completing that basically every book I read at the moment and read a book in translation. But there's eight more um, in the little bags. There are lovely little gifts. So I've had some, some little flower pins. And then I, more recently, I had this lovely uh, book necklace with little flowers on. So let's see if there's any I can complete this weekend. Read a book by an author whose work you have loved before. I haven't loved any of those books. Oh, the only other thing is that I'm listening to Babel by R.F. Quang. I mean, that is a reread, so would that count? I mean, it would count, because I have loved their work before. So yeah, maybe that one, if I finish it, I've got like 14 hours, I don't think that'll be happening. Um, read one of the largest books on your TBR. None of those are large. That won't be happening, I shouldn't think, because I have to finish the book within the vlog. Um, read a book that fits with the season and make a seasonal snack or meal to go with it. What's seasonal in February? I really don't know. So no, probably not. Um, I can hear David singing in the shower. Read one of the oldest books on your TBR. Either you've owned it for ages or it was published a long time ago. Also, don't. that's not happening because it's all library books at the moment. Read an arc, that's not happening. It's all library books at the moment. Read one of the shortest books on your TBR, that's not happening. Read a book you heard recommended on a podcast. Now, I don't think Monsters was recommended on a podcast, so that was the only book I was thinking maybe, but no. And then the last one is read a book picked by David, uh, either one he bought or just selected from your TBR. No, so no challenges being completed today. But next week I'll make sure I complete a challenge because, God, I want the prizes. Right, let's pick a question to discuss for the day. So if you're new here, um, I ask a little bookish question at the, top of the, at the top of the blog and then we answer it at the end. You guys can answer it in the comments and I'll answer it here. Um, and the, <laughs> She can't get the bloody questions out. The questions are from... <laughs> oh, my God, I can't. There's one more there. There we go. Oh, is that one as well? No, uh, they are from Lit Chat. They're made by Book Riot. They're very good chat questions, book chat questions. There's 50 of them. Um, and I'm now down to my last, let's count how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine book, uh, nine questions left. So let's pick one. 
they don't shuffle very well. And then there's two on each, so there's 50 cards, but there's two questions on each. So once I've gone through once, we can start again and ask the second question. Right, The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. If you could join a friend group from any book, which one would you choose? That's nice, isn't it? If you could join a friend group from any book, which one would you choose? I have to be careful that my answers to these questions aren't just the same book every time because the first thing that comes to my mind, I think I've that, that book has been an answer recently. If you could choose a friend group from any book, which one would you choose? I think we crack on with the day. So I haven't had any breakfast yet, which was a bit daft going to get blood tests. I know I didn't have the blood test done, but a bit daft going to hair drying, if you can hear that. Um, going to get blood test done without eating anything, in case you faint. But anyway, I didn't have to have blood test done. So some crumpets have arrived. Once somebody I follow on Instagram during the week had crumpets with um, Philadelphia and honey on, and I just thought, yes, that's what I want. So that is what I'm going to have. And then I think I'll edit, at least start editing the vlog, and then... 12-ish I'll start making the cake because it needs to be cooled and ready for the cinema because we're leaving here about four for the cinema okay so it takes 15 minutes to prep and then 25 to 30 minutes to cook and then obviously it's got to cool and everything so yeah 12-ish would be good so let's get a good let's get some bloody old um crumpets on Domino's have just texted me David Domino's double saver any two small pizzas 14.99 two medium 18.99 two large 22.99 what's that Domino's what about them well, they've just texted me. Yeah, we're having Domino's. No, we're having burger tonight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right, I'm going to have my crumpets. As you can see, <laughs> my house isn't feeling the cosiest house it's ever felt. I've got washing here. I've got washing here. That is a mess. But I have got delicious looking crumpets with creamed Philadelphia, honey, thyme and beetroot salt. It's delicious. And annoyingly, I um, forgot to order caster sugar on my bloody um, order, which is insane because I go through and work out what I need for the cakes. So David's going to go to the shop, the co-op, around midday. Um... And hopefully they'll have caster sugar there. If not, I've got granulated. So I will give that a go. But anyway. Oh my god, that's so good. To edit. Go. Edited. It was lovely. And as always, because I seem to be doing a lot of these editings on a Friday. Um, I will link it down below if you'd like to go and check it out. Because by the time this video goes out, it will be out. Um... David's just nipped to the shop to see if he can get some caster sugar. So I will make... Oh, it says it's failed. Why is it... Oh, this isn't plugged in. See me. Um, David's just nipped to the shop to get the caster sugar. So I think I'll just do a little bit of reading while I'm waiting for this to process because by gum, this takes ages. Yeah. Uh, third of the second. What was that? Oh, I feel like I can maybe hear the eggs boiling over. I'm gonna go and check on those, but I'm gonna read for a bit. It smells of absolute pure egg in here, David. I don't know why that is. <laughs> David's just boiled some eggs and then made egg mayo. Also, he did manage to get caster sugar from the um, co-op, but the inflation on smaller shops, this was two pounds 80. There's 500 grams of caster sugar there. I mean, it's gonna make me a couple of cakes. We'll take it. and. David bought it, so we definitely will take it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start making marmalade coffee cake. David has just, well, he earlier said to me that he needs to have a taster of this before we decide on taking this to the cinema. But I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. My brother is going to be delighted because it means we've actually got good coffee around him now because he doesn't drink tea, or doesn't drink decaf tea at least. So yeah, let's go for it. So, we'll speed this up. I do so. I love the smell of coffee so much, but I just can't drink it. Well, number one, I can't drink it because it gives me, a caffeine gives me well bad anxiety. But number two, as much as I love the smell, I don't love the taste. Any other out there love the smell, hate the taste of things? Yeah, let me know. <laughs> let me know if you've got something that you love the smell of, but you hate the taste of. 
I think coffee's the only one I can think of. Right, let's get going. Preheat the oven to 160 on a fan. That's me. Let's go. Pinny on, it's very cute, isn't it? This pinny. I think it's from TK Maxx. I think maybe Minnie got it for me. Um, I've been watching a lot of Instagram vids of late, little Instagram shorts of people speed cleaning, so setting themselves a timer. So, I mean, sometimes they do an hour um, and then just tidying a room until that's done. Now, as I said earlier, the lounge is in disarray, <laughs> there's washing everywhere, the sofa looks crap. Everywhere needs a bit of a wipe down, maybe a little bit of a dust. There's things that need putting away. David's computer games. There's washing on the backs of chairs, which is never my fave. Still got ages left on the video, so. But I thought, I've just checked, and there's about 17 minutes left on the timer. So I thought, well, I'll just go 17 minutes in here whilst putting on um, maybe a 90s playlist and going for it. So, here we go, 17 minutes to go. Alexa, play 90s music. What's gonna be the first song? All Out 90s. All Out 90s. This ain't no disco. Let's go. Alexa, volume up to six. Seventeen minutes, right on time. Alexa, stop timer. Well, it's good, isn't it? Seventeen minutes. It was a quick one, David. What did you get done in your seventeen minutes? I put the washing on the air away. The stuff on the heated air still needs to be on there. I wiped down the table. I wiped down the TV unit and the TV. I did the window seal, the windows, and the two pictures. I repuffed the pillow, uh, the re cushion, re and the re uh, rearranged them. Hoovered throughout. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All in 17 minutes, so I've got a few things to be ticking off of the old sweepy, but I think I'll go and check on the cake first. Bit hot now, if anything. Bit hot now, if anything. 
and my alarm went and my watch went off to say I was in zone minutes. It's a good thing about cleaning. Right, let me go and check on the cake. Let's have a look at what these cakes are doing. Let's do my syrup. Oh, they look pretty good. Oh, my, um, my arrangement of this isn't that good. Look, look at this. Yeah. I've got a special poking stick. This is how I know which one's the special one because it's got a little hat on the end. And I plunge. Nice. Oh, that one's a little bit. Needs a bit more, does it? Yeah. Do you know what? I'll just put it in, but I'll put that one on that side because I think this side of the oven cooks a bit smoother. I'll just put it in for two more minutes. Alexa, set timer for two minutes. Two minutes. Here is the coffee cake. Just a little bit. This hasn't got the syrup in, so tell me. Don't like it. No, it's just that coffee taste. I don't feel like it's very strong coffee. It's, no, it's in my mouth. Okay. Well, we tried, didn't we? We always know. We always knew. We knew. So what are you going to have then? I don't know. Nothing. Well, no, mm -hmm. something. Oh, it's quite nice. Oh, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I've just got that. Like this, the sweet bit was nice, but it's just that coffee taste. Very light, isn't it? It is very like it's again, bake-wise, beautiful, beautiful bake on it. Thank you. So you got an eyelash. Make a wish. <sighs> you still got to make it. <sighs> was the wish to have a cake that isn't coffee cake? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go and put the syrup on it now, and I'll, I'll have a bit of the cinema tonight. Good. Then we've got a whole one to take to my sister's tomorrow. Good. Cool. And the video's almost uploaded, guys. It's been taking so long. And I'll do a bit of reading. We're leaving in a couple of hours, aren't we? Yeah. Less than. Well, I said I was going to try and insert it before the end of the video so that I'm not rushing to wrap everything up. So. I'm just sat here, literally waiting for my mum and dad to arrive, who are late for everything. Well, they're on there, but they're at my sister's for lunch, and then they said they were going to pop by and have a slice of cake. But it sounded on the phone like they were leaving then and there. They have not arrived. So, <laughs> and I've made them a cup of tea, which has gone cold now. So I thought, well, I'll listen to the piece of music. So the piece of music today is String Quartet in E flat major, one Adagio Manon Troppo by Fanny Mendelssohn, who lived between 1505 and 1847. Um, like I, I normally do, I'll list it all down below there. I never know what the sort of name is and stuff like that, because sometimes it's from a piece of music or sometimes it's a particular part of a piece of music, but I will list it all below. It says here, when Fanny Mendelssohn was 14, <laughs> I can't believe what she was doing when she was 14, because this ain't what I was doing when I was 14. She memorised J.S. Buck's 48 Preludes and Fugues and played them to her father for his birthday. Mr. Mendelssohn was apparently impressed, charmed even, by this astonishing feat of memory and technical prowess. But his response to his sensationally gifted daughter can essentially be summed up as very nice, dear, but leave music making to the boys. Mr. Mendelssohn, what a knob. With the exception of some fierce pioneers, see... Oh, so the next two that are coming up. Um, the history of women in classical music is pretty much this, right up until the late 20th century. Talented humans is compelled, talented human is compelled to express herself through music, but is, request by, but is repressed by a patriarchy that forbids her from composing except behind closed doors. Why, what's so infuriating is that Fanny was in, was in a supposedly supportive environment. Felix was well aware of his sister's genius. They shared every piece they wrote and he adored her, yet he even prevented her from publishing her work. Presumably he was trying to be helpful when he put out lots under his name or simply F. Mendelssohn, meaning that music was for years, uh, which, which meaning that music which for years was attributed to Felix is only now being revealed as Fanny's. Even Queen Victoria, when asked which piece of Felix's pieces she liked best, named a song by Fanny. When Felix set off on a grand tour of Europe, Fanny stayed at home and got married. Thankfully, her husband, painter William Hensel, encouraged her. He supplied her with manuscript paper every day before he went to his own studio. Fanny probably never believed her music would be heard beyond the confines of her own home. Many of the 450 pieces she produced are miniatures, but here she breaks out onto a more expansive musical canvas and more than holds her own. I'm bloody pumped to read this. I love the backstory behind it. So let's try and find it here then. So, 
string quartet in E flat Oh god, it's even it's even listed as Felix Mendelssohn on Spotify. Major Adagio I do find it hard to find these pieces. Why can't they just be called song? Ma non Troppo. Yeah. Oh no, Fanny Mendelssohn. Here we go. Well oh, there we go. I just sort of laid here and let it wash over me. It was nice, it was a bit melancholy. I've got a feeling that last time I listened to the piece of music I said that was a bit melancholy as well, but yeah. Girl power, always up for a bit of girl power. Even in my classical bangers. Yeah, that feels nice to have that done on a Friday, doesn't it? Despite the whole weekend of reading ahead of us, so yeah. String Quartet in E flat major, one Adagio Mon Mat Non Troppo by Fanny Mendelssohn. Go on Fanny, love the name Fanny, by the way, I really do. I think I'll read a little bit more of, do I ring my mother and father and say, look, are you coming? Maybe I misunderstood, maybe I will ring them, I will. Did I misunderstand? What, you said come after? No, I said come on the way. Oh, I thought you meant on the way back, so did Dad. We didn't realise you meant that. You look like you was only just putting it in the oven, though. No, it's cooked. Your teas are cold. No, we won't. Alright then. We misunderstood that then. Okay. Alright, bye. Bye. They misunderstood. She's the same colour as the sofa and the blanket. Yeah, when it's dark in here, she does a... She does like a little afternoon snooze. And it's, an afternoon snooze. it's very, very cute because she brings herself in here and just does a little snooze, don't you, snoozy girl? Sometimes she sleeps on the dining room chair. chair? Yeah. She does like it in here, I think. She's such a lovely girl, isn't she? We love you. Beautiful. It's the washing that smells so Yeah, nice. it smells delicious. The living room's open for business, Dappy. She loves the living room. So we just I back. Love the living room. David loves the living room. We're back from the cinema. I'm backlit, aren't I? Back from the cinema and backlit. Um, saw Argle. It was fine. I was entertained. But as I said to David on the way back, if a film's over a hundred minutes, I'm gonna move you because the backlighting is awful. Yeah, as I, was, as I was saying, if the film's over a hundred minutes, I find it hard to stay engaged for that long. But yeah, it was action packed and good cast. It's fine, just fine. <laughs> um, but my cake was nice. David didn't have any. Um, and now we're home. It's gonna be a bit of a late one actually because we're home, we have to go to Sainsbury's on the way home to get rolls because we're having vegetarian burgers, wedges and salad for dinner. Uh, and we had to pop in and we also popped to see, say hello to David's mum and dad, but alas, they weren't in. So yeah, we're home now. I think I'll wrap this up. Uh, we're gonna go and cook dinner and listen to uh, Classic FM because on a Friday and Saturday night, Jonathan Ross does a uh, radio show which has music from the movies on and we both really, really like it. Um, so yeah, I think I'll see you tomorrow for a, cl a few cleaning bits. And yeah, I don't know what else. Oh, hello baby, you're on mummy's leg. Oh, there was a cat. There was a cat like Daffy in the film actually. Wasn't there? Or oh, you weren't there, so you wouldn't know. Their cat was called Alfie, and I think it was a Scottish fold. But it was still had a little face, like this little face. Oh, <laughs> you are so gorgeous. Can you say bye bye. Say bye bye. Hello. Happy Saturday from me and my bra. How are you? <coughs> it's eleven o'clock. I mean, I've been out of bed. I've got, I've got back in bed. Um, just been FaceTiming my sister, and reading a bit of this which I started last night and I've read a little bit more this morning Monsters a, fan di a Fan's Dilemma very much enjoying it very readable which is something that I long for when I'm reading non-fiction because quite often 
uh, non-fiction I read, sometimes I feel like it's a bit here and I'm a bit here. So um, yeah, I'm finding this very, very interesting. Um, and yeah, just so many sort of, even early on, and I'm literally like 40 pages in, that's not true, 36 pages in, so many sort of questions posed that are obvious questions, but that I wouldn't have thought of myself about separating the art from the artist and trying to enjoy things, even though the person who created it has got some questionable views or views that are completely different to yours, or in some cases have committed criminal offences. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very much enjoying it and I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm wondering, like I said, the the, the long list. No, like I said, I didn't say the long list for the women's prize for well, this was published last year. The women's prize for non-fiction is coming out on I think I think it's next week, um, the fifth Thursday the fifteenth. So not next week, the week after. Um, and I don't really, I'm not really au fait with what non-fiction books are coming out and stuff, but this was published in 2023, so there's a high chance that this could be on there. And it would be very, very um, deserving of a place if it was. So yeah, we'll continue to read that today. Um, and then I finished um, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies last night. So I will start a fiction book today as well. But for now, just decided with my sister what we're doing tonight. So we're going around there. We're going to watch Gladiators. Um, and then once we put my niece to bed, we're going to play Rummy Cub. We're going to have a series of curries. Um, so my sister's going to do a few curries. I think I'm going to do a halloumi and green bean curry, just because that's what I've got here. Um, and take that. And then we're going to watch uh, Gladiators. And then we'll put my niece to bed. And then we'll play Rummy Cub. But David is just finishing watching an episode of... What's that program? It's always sunny in Philadelphia. And then he's gonna take the car around to my sister's because her husband has a pressure washer and he's gonna wash the car around there, which will be cheaper than putting it through the car wash, which we tend to do sort of every, I would say every month, but no, every other month. But yeah, he's gonna take it around there and just uh, do that. Well, I'm gonna clean the bathrooms and the kitchen. So that's the plan. And then I'll get changed, at which point maybe I'll start a fiction book or at least I'll get to a point in here. But yeah, very much enjoying this. Do you want to clean the bathrooms with me? Have I cleaned the bathrooms with you before? On this? Here? I think I have. I don't want to keep putting you through the same old thing every week. Maybe I'll clean the dishwasher with you and show you how I clean the dishwasher. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I've been so busy. I've done both bathrooms, washing. I've now got my cloth in there, but as promised, I'm going to clean the dishwasher. So I learned how to clean the dishwasher from watching TikToks on, you guessed it, how to clean the dishwasher. So first of all, I'm just emptying the dishwasher off as it was on last night. Then I'm going to take the filters out, pop those in some um, warm soapy water um and then i will put in the top tray the top shelf of the dishwasher a little pot this one probably full of white wine vin uh, white vinegar there, it will be more than that put that on the top and put in the bottom um chuck some bicarb around then I put it on the hottest wok it can do um, and let it do its bit really um, and then it will wash I'll also use this as an opportunity to wash my scrub daddy because I wash the scrub daddy I use all the time if you're thinking Lauren, what on earth is a scrub daddy? I'll show you it. A scrub daddy is, I've got the scrub daddy and a scrub mummy. This is a scrub daddy. And it's this. And they're firm when they're cold and when they get uh, warm. If you do it with cold water, they'll stay firm. And if you do it with warm water, they stay soft. And they're amazing for washing up, wiping stuff down, shower screens, cleaning, all sorts, all sorts. Oh, my husband David's back from cleaning the car. 
So I'll use that as an opportunity to pop that and, and I'll wash it by putting it in the dishwasher on a hot wash and it will sterilise it. So that's the plan. Let's put these mugs away and then let's get out the filters, which will be rank, I'm sure. Go. It's going to be revolting. Oh, I'm going to wash this as well. It's going to be revolting. So much. Oh, oh sweet corn. Cool. What are you talking about? I'm taking out butter beans. Oh, the filters. The filters. This bit. Oh, rank. There we go. Right. So, I'm going to toss some bicarb around in the bottom. And the pork. I'll fill up my pot of bicarb. I want that to be full and I would also maybe think about putting in if I had any lemons that I'd use for cooking left over I'd think about putting those in there as well but I don't then you've got a couple of other bits here but have I bought other bits? Uh, no. oh nice fill that up in a slot yeah I can fill that up to the very top. I can already hear it fizzing, David. Fizzing with excitement. What, excitement? Yeah. There we go. The other thing you could put in there would just be a little bit of... Um, uh, was, would be a little bit of dish soap. You don't have to all listen to that in there. Right, now I need to put this on the hottest one. Programs. My hottest one goes to 70. How do I select the programs, David? Uh, because you've not let the you've not let the last program run its course. So okay, I just that can't. should be fine now. No, you might need to leave it for a while. David's just helped me. So it's on 70. Pop it on. I think that's going to start. And then I would just spray down the outside. Well, we've not oh, that one's going to get a bit of spray down the outside. I need to refill my vinegar. I need to refill my vinegar. I won't do it on the floor. I'm not a fool. Um, and wipe this down. And then I'll wash up those bits. And then once this is finished, that'll all be done. And I think I might leave it there, actually, you know. Because the bu how do the bathrooms look, David? Lovely. And I do need to have a shower, and I've also got to cook a curry before I go around to my sister's for half half four. Yeah. Have you had e Have you eaten anything, David? I've had. I trekked myself to a little sausage roll. Oh, I'd love to be trekked to a sausage roll, but I have been trekked to some daffodils. Sorry, you just touched my bum. Hold oh, it, me. That's it. Just wipe this down. Yeah, there was a little cheeky walls one for a pound, but I thought I'm gonna have that. Are you hungry? Not really, and I think we're eating quite early. Yeah, that's right. I just need a little, I need a little morsel. A little pick you up. Yeah, after all of my hard work. Oh, oh what am I doing? Oh no. She's a fraud, she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah. I haven't even put it on, David. Yeah. Look. There we go. Lovely, lovely all together. Lovely, lovely all together. And wash up those bits. Right, just keep this stuff on. Bathed! I'm ready to go. I don't know if I've mentioned, but I have been reading The Curfew by TM Logan. I can't remember having mentioned it on this vlog. Anyway, I'm going to be reading, I've, I've read over 100 pages of it. It's a very page turnery. It's about a curfew, a young lad who says he'll be home by a certain time and um, he isn't or seemingly isn't and um then there's some stuff that's gone down I, I haven't found out i'm 100 pages in but i haven't found out what's gone down in the woods which is where he apparently was um but yeah page turning master of the up all night thriller says tm logan so yeah i do i, I enjoy a thriller in a sort of palate cleanser type way or if I want to really engage with something and read something quickly. I quite enjoy this and it's cozy reading night tomorrow night. Um, and I picked two, um, two 
thrillers that I might read during that time. Well, obviously, I'm going to read this one because I've started it now. Um, but also, this has got a reservation on it at the library, so helpful. So, yeah, I'm just over 100 pages through that. Um, and I think maybe I'll go back and read a little bit of this. The next chapter is about Michael Jackson. Um, that's that. But bits of post arrived, so I thought I'd just open. Not quite sure what these bits of post are. Oh, I do. It's my skin and me, um, which is something I've been using now I find them very oh I've got I've got a free sample in this one as well of a, of a nighttime oil is it a nighttime oil brighten and boost calming azalic acid serum and then this is the actual treatment um, that I get which I'm very into um, and this is recyclable et eternally recyclable because it's uh, infin <laughs> infinitely recyclable because it's made out of um, Aluminium, but yeah, so it just, you, you turn this, I won't turn it because it, it tells you how many treatments you've got in there, that's a month's worth. You turn it, it gives you the precise amount of treatment, it's tailored to your skin. Oh, I've got a different, I've got a different prescriber this time. Um, and yeah, it, it's dealing with my redness. I mean, as you can see, my redness has really gone down. I'm absolutely elated with it, it's very, very good. I do have an affiliate link. I think it gets you free treatment on your first and fifth month and I think I get £10, so I'll link that down below. But yeah, really cannot recommend it enough. I also use their, um, it hasn't come this time because I don't need it, and it's tailored to like what you what you need each month. Um, their cleanser and the moisturiser and the SPF, but this is a new thing that they're trialling, which is a morning, oh, this is the morning treat. Apply three to four drops to the face in the morning after cleansing before your moisturiser and sunscreen. So I thought I'd give it a try, and this is just a little trial's worth. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's got a 10% complex to calm inflammation and clear breakouts, which is what I've got. So there we go. That was one bit of post. Um, and then this bit of post. I've literally no idea what this is. I'm going to remember that like this. It's heavy. Oh! It's middle... Oh! It's my Delicious magazine subscription, which I mentioned before, didn't I? I got this, oh, well, hang on to that because I can post somebody's birthday present with that. Um, I've been kind enough, Mia, who I know through the green, the little green bookshop, has been kind enough to sign me up for a six month free trial of Delicious magazine. I mean, look at that. Marbled custard with chocolate parking, the great spotted dick revival and more. It's all about nostalgic puddings. Um, and I've got a link for this as well, which I think gets you three issues for a pound. I will link that down below as well. Oh, I'm going to have a little lovely time reading this. Although I do have to go and make that curry. And then last time I think I got, oh yeah, I did. I got sent a really, really nice pack of cheese and cumin biscuits. I must remember where they were from because they, because they were delicious. And this time I've got wild gorse flour. Cornish coastal paths, warming toasted coconut with hints of fudge and hazelnut, ending in light red fruit. I'm gonna hang, and this is a company called Chocolada, which are plastic free packaging, slavery free, multi award winning, fairly traded, and stone ground. Made in Cornwall. I won't have some now because I've just brushed my teeth and I won't get the full thing, but that's a nice thing to have. But as I said, I might just have a little flick through my magazine. I have got to make a cut. No, I should really. I've got to go make the curry and then because I need it to be transportable around to my sisters, I need the thing that I'm cooking it into a cool down as well. So um, yeah, I'm going to make a halloumi, cashew nut and green bean curry to take to my sisters and she's doing a few curries as well, um, which would be nice. And then I'm going to take round the cake that I made yesterday as well. So yeah, I'll go and do that, I think. And then I can eat the chocolate maybe. Maybe I'll eat it tomorrow during cozy reading night. Maybe I think I will. Morning. It's Sunday, well I say morning, it's 20 to 1, <laughs> it's not Sunday morning, but we've been having a little potter around, we didn't end up going to the, um, we didn't end up going to the cinema, we actually booked a holiday for David's 40th birthday next year, so we've got a long time to wait, but um, we went on a cruise of Norway last year for our honeymoon, which we both loved. We're quite lazy travellers, so having a basically a floating hotel that takes you to different stops is perfect. We went for our honeymoon last year in June. It was amazing. We said that we wanted to go back, but we're also saving quite a lot this year. 
uh, for a, a few bits. And, um, but it's only the 14th next year. We wanted something to look forward to. So we put down a deposit and yeah, we're very excited to do that. So David's currently in the lounge watching videos <laughs> of people cruising in Norway, even though we've been ourselves. Um, and yeah, we're both feeling very excited. So just doing a few little jobs. I've had a little read in bed this morning of the curfew. We've got cozy reading night tonight, uh, which is exciting. Very exciting, in fact. First time we've done one in ages. We did one, I, I did one, I don't think David did, a Patreon Christmas one. I don't think I've done one for a long, long time. So it's a live show event. That would have already happened. I will link the live show below if you'd like to go and check it out. It's three hours of online reading event <laughs> uh, where we sort of read together and chat about what we're reading and stuff. They're lovely. Lovely, lovely things to do. It makes me think, why haven't I done it more often? Um, so, oh, I forgot I had these on. Need these to help me take those off. In fact, I might need David to help me. Oh no, there's not one there. Um, I'm just changing the bed sheets. And then, like I said, a few little jobs. And David's gonna, David's just made the batter because we're having toad in the hole for dinner this evening. Vegetarian toad in the hole. Well, not this evening. I'm gonna have it early afternoon because we're quite into that, an early dinner on a Sunday. I'm still here. Uh, and I've also got uh, all about the archers meeting where we're going to chat about a few bits we've got a patreon event coming up which is very exciting um and yeah change my bed sheets and onwards with the day so i'll probably wrap this all up by the time is it time to shall i wash my mattress protector i think i might or shall i leave it until until it's a bit warmer outside i think one more one more go we'll do it and then hopefully when I wash it in towards the end of the month or March it might be a little bit warmer outside so it'll dry a bit quicker um yeah so I'll wrap this up at some point but yeah reading's been good quite enjoying the curfew I'm gonna listen to a bit of Babel now then I'm gonna have a shower put my hair in plaits get ready for the day I'm gonna wear something bookish today because it's cozy reading night tonight and ideally I'd like to be in pyjamas, but I think David's sisters bought me a very nice bookish t-shirt from New York Library when they were there before Christmas. They got it as part of my Christmas present, so I'm gonna wear that today, I think. But yeah, let's pop the washing on. Oh, I forgot about everything. I didn't wrap it up or anything. It's now Tuesday and I'm off sick from work. I've got such a bad tummy ache. Not even period pain. It feels like period pain, but it's, there is no period. Oh God, I'm really far away. I've only just managed to drag myself out of bed and get in a bath, but I thought I'd wrap this up now because I need to get it out there. So yeah, here I am wrapping this up. So first of all, let's start with a question. If you could join, oh, I haven't thought about this since I've said it. If you could join a friend group from any book, which one would you choose? If you could join a friend book, oh, I just ate this. From any, if you could join a friendship book group from any book, what would you choose? I mean, the friendship between Will and Lyra in his Dark Materials—that's pretty special, isn't it? A little bit more than a friendship, I suspect. Um, obviously, I wouldn't want to grow up doing that. I'd be proper gooseberry in there, wouldn't I? But that's a that's a nod to it. Bridget Jones's diary. I feel like Bridget Jones's diary is often uh, an answer um, to a lot of these questions. Um, but I think Bridget, Jude, Shazza, and Tom have a great laugh together, and I feel like I'd slot in there probably quite well. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. So my answer is uh, Bridget Jones's group of friends. If you could join a friend group from any book, which would you choose? Um, and then today's poem because it's now the 6th of February. Sorry about the low energy in this, guys. This is much higher energy than I was earlier on today. We've either got A Riddle by Jonathan Swift or The ABC by Spike Milligan. 
We're going to go for The Riddle by Jonathan Swift. So it says, Jonathan Swift was one of the greatest satirists in the English language. Oh, this bodes well. I hate satire. In his writings, he takes up the voices and styles of other writers and literary forms, and he explores the inherent silliness of politics and societies alike. Swift's best-known work is... Gulliver's Travels, um, the mock journal of a man who goes on a fantasy adventure to lands of giants and lands where horses rule over people. In the poem below, Swift uses the traditional form of the riddle to find a creative way of thinking about, well, find the answer below. I don't know, but my brain's not working so well today. From heaven I fall, though from earth I begin. No lady alive can show such a skin. I'm bright as an angel and light as a feather, but heavy and dark when you squeeze me together. Though candour and truth in my aspect I bear, yet many poor creatures I help to ensnare. Though so much of heaven appears in my make, the foulest impressions I easily take. My parent and I produce one another, the mother the daughter, the daughter the mother. Well, I thought snow from the, the first off, from heaven I fall, though from earth I begin. Begins as water, I guess. No lady alive can show such a skin. Is it snow, is it rain? I'm bright as an angel and light as a feather. Snow is light. But heavy and dark when you squeeze me together. I wouldn't say that it's dark. Maybe it's not snow, but then it can't be water either. Though candour and truth in my aspect I bear, yet many poor creatures I help to ensnare. Though so much of heaven appears in my make, the foulest impressions I easily take. My parent and I produce one another. How do I feel? Oh, it's written at the bottom of the fucking page. It's snow. Oh, maybe I'm not as silly as I thought. There we go. So, thank you for watching this Friday reading vlog. Um, yeah, I hope you're feeling a bit better. My God. Um, and I'll see you all again soon for another picture video. Goodbye.